Hey guys, a good day and thanks for coming back to the next video. Hey, about the last video I did called uh, about escaping the tribulation, um, I was looking at um, that video was really centered around Daniel 12 1, where the prophet Daniel makes it pretty clear that uh, at the time when the tribulation begins, or at that time of tribulation, uh, those whose names are written in the book of life will slip away and escape that time. And there was a particular comment um, that I saw that someone gave. His name was Shaken Not Stirred. He said, No escape in the Great Tribulation, which is 42 months. He says, Yes, when the last trumpet sounds bingo, uh, then we're out of here. So um, I want to talk about that because uh, I, I don't want to give a false sense of security to, to everyone. Uh, at least scripture doesn't point to that. Uh, many people, from what I can tell, are, you know, this is a diagram I've used a, a bunch of times. So what, what, what I have seen, and I've seen modern day prophetic words speak about, is that there is a harvest of the first fruits, which um, I think is going to take, it's going to occur over the course of a seven day period or a short, very short period. And then there's a terrible time of trial, which would last 40 days or 50 days or something like that. And that this initial departure of folks of the first fruits, that that is, um, that's on the order of one tenth of the body of Christ, the Christians at the time, and that the overwhelming majority will have to go through this terrible time of trial. And after they are refined, they would be uh, harvested, raptured. Uh, those who are alive and left behind would be raptured here at the end. I want to bring to light a, a few prophetic words and some more information from the scriptures to, to, to talk about this. Here is a, um, a prophetic word from Mina Lee Grebin that she received in 2015. And this is what she says. He says, what is what's what she says, what is coming upon this nation will affect many who claim that they know me. This is because not everyone who is part of my church I call my bride. See, the bride is a subset of the church. Many people believe that they will be shielded from the judgment when in fact they will go through it. Not everyone who calls upon my name will enter into my kingdom, but every ten, but every ten people who pray to me and declare me as their Lord, I only know one, says the Lord of hosts. So basically what she says is, is that um, uh, most of the church is going to go through the judgments. Now that's not the wrath, it's the judgments. And I can show you here why those judgments are going to occur. Uh, I have speculated that there's three huge um, blunders, I guess, areas of sin in the United States. And I think it started when, in 1963, we took prayer out of school. And then in 1973, uh, we made it legal to sacrifice little babies at the altar of convenience. And then in 2015, the country celebrated while we um, legalize an abomination before the Lord, which we know is gay marriage. So guys, I'm going to jump back to, to this. So uh, th this, he, this person is, is correct for most people, what I would say. I don't know. I don't know it's going to be 1260 days. I really feel that time is left for the wicked people to experience God's wrath. But what I see is I see this short time, well, 40 days is not that short, of this time of trial, this tribulation period. And the sixth seal is at the end of this time. Early on is when the seals begin. That's when the departures of the first fruits take occur. So one of the things he did say was he says, no escaping the great tribulation. So um, I have a, a study where I speak about this. Um, uh, here it's right here. And you guys can download this document. This is one of the first documents I did to to argue with the point that um, there are Christians out there that say there is no rapture, that uh, nothing's ever going to happen. We're going to stay on this earth. Uh, Jesus is just going to come and that'll be it. But Jesus clearly makes a promise to us in John 14, 1, John 14, 1 through 6, where he says, I'm going to leave and then I'm going to come back and take you to be myself in my father's house where there are many rooms, many dwelling places. And uh, I talk about you know, this offer right here. It's a free offer. It's a pretty incredible offer. You know, the offer goes like this. He's going to remove his faithful followers when the catastrophic events begin to the earth. 
the children and part of the bride first, then the rest of the bride, the rest of the bride a short time later. If you're, if you're part of the harvesting bride, you'll be sent back and then you'll be here harvesting, while another portion of the bride will leave with the children and the innocents. Then he's going to give us this mansion in heaven that's been personally designed and configured. Now this is craziness when you speak to the world about this. They think you're nuts when you talk about this stuff. And then you get a brand new body that will last forever. Pretty incredible to even consider that. And it's all for free. And all you got to do is just respond to Jesus with faith. Just believe in him. That he sacrificed himself for your sins to make you perfect before a holy God. It's it's not that difficult to understand. A friend of mine years ago thought it was weird that if there was a God, why would God send a representative that he calls his son to die? He didn't make any sense to him, but it makes sense to me now. So I want to talk about Luke 17. So when I read the Bible, when I read the, read, read the, the words of Jesus, I see Luke 17 as a description of this first fruits departure and he describes it by this he says for as lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other so will the son of man be on his day and so I'm not going to read all this guys you guys can read this but I want to go to a modern day prophetic word I have speculated that this is referring to the colorful lights in the sky and there is a modern day prophetic word that speaks about this uh, it came out on April 13th, 2019. It says the three days of darkness will start at the same moment for all humanity. On a very cold night, intense thunder and lightning will be heard all over the earth. The next morning, the first sign is radiant colors in the sky. So let me go back to this on a very cold night. So there's going to be a night where there's going to be intense thunder and lightning. Obviously, that's going to light up the whole sky. I really think that is what Jesus is referring to in Luke 17. And many other modern day prophets have spoken about colorful lights in the sky. And this is this cosmic event. And then it goes like this. In the sky, two heavenly bodies will collide, creating a red cross. That could be the sign of the Son of Man. And in at this event, time then will stop for all humanity at the same moment. All over the world. And then the Lord's going to visit every single person every single person on the planet during the time of darkness. He says, I will prepare a mirror for each man, woman, child over the age of responsibility. You will see your sins of commission and omission as a scroll unraveling from your birth like a movie of your life unfolding in real time before your eyes. You will be alone with me and your sins. No one will see or hear about your inferior life. Do not fear, plead for mercy. Give your eyes to God and be humble. If you curse me, your life could be extinguished then and there. Hell awaits. Do not fight my last offer of salvation to humanity so deeply enmeshed in the sin, both personal and collective. And then he speaks about those who accept, accept him there will have to spend 40 more days uh, repentance when the Antichrist will be revealed and, and the beast system will start to prepare, will start at that point. So I have speculated a bunch of times that uh, that this event is essentially Isaiah 17, 7. And Isaiah 17, 7 is after Damascus is destroyed and says this, In that day man will look to his maker and the eyes of mankind will look upon the Holy One of Israel. That's where I see that Jubilees chapter 7 says the same thing. The prophet Zechariah 9 says the same thing. Let me show you that. It's right here, guys. Yeah. Um, this is right when Damascus is destroyed. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord is against Hadrach with Damascus as the resting place. For the eyes of men, especially all the tribes of Israel, this is not just the Jews, it's all the Christians and the Jews, will, are towards the word, are towards the Lord. Same thing in Isaiah here. In that day, man will look to his maker and his eyes will be on the whole. This, this is that event that's being spoken of right there. Okay, so what I wanted to speak about as I continue on is this idea that this uh, this guy here says that um, Shaken Nasser says there is no escape. So in this study I have here, 
I have a section. You guys, you can download this, this study here, guys. I have a section that speaks about escaping. Because I've, I've been told this before. I've heard people say, you know, why do Christians think they're going to escape? Well, it's the faithful Christians who are going to escape. Not the lukewarm and not the unbelievers. So, I'm not going to read all these verses, but you can see in Luke 21, Jesus makes this um, plea with us to be to pray to be accounted worthy to escape all these things all these things in Luke 21 are the tribulation that begins and then Daniel 12 1 says and at that time of trouble those who are written in the written in the book of life will escape and Jeremiah 31 makes the same references for there will be a day when the watchman will call on the hill country of Ephraim arise let us go up to Zion so where are we escaping to it's to Zion all these verses speak about Zion. Jeremiah 50, when Babylon is destroyed, a voice, you know, a shout. They flee and they escape from the land of Babylon to declare, to declare in the heavenly Mount Zion. Joel 2.32, same thing, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape. But in Mount Obadiah, but in Mount Zion, there will be those who escape. But Zechariah 2, up, escape to Zion. Okay? <laughs> You know, and when you read up here in Luke 21, it says, those who have prayed and, be, and were accounted worthy to escape all these things, and they stood before the Son of Man. Where do we see people standing before the Son of Man? Well, right in Revelation 7, after the sixth seal, there was a great multitude, no one could number, from every nation of all the tribes, standing before the throne. It would be the Son of Man, the Lamb on the throne. And then you have Revelation 14, 1, you got the 144,000 who stood on Mount Zion with the Lamb, who stood with the Lamb. So, when I hear Christians, these uh, mocking, scoffing, rapture-type Christians, say that, you know, where do you get off saying you're going to escape? I'm like, well, just read the, the Word of God and you can see. You can see where and you can see when. Daniel 12, 1 says it's going to occur at, at that time of tribulation. When the tribulation begins, which I think are the seals. So, but only a small group, the bride, one tenth, is going to escape. Now we see this same reference in Luke 17. I'll go back again. So Luke 17 is where I think we see the colorful lights in the sky that Jesus is giving this reference to. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to another, that's the colorful lights. Then later. Uh, I tell you, in that night, one will be taken and one will be left. But look, look at the what's before, just before these verses. It's the story in the Bible about the ten lepers come to Jesus, and they stood at a distance, and they they cried out to be healed, right? And they were healed. But how many lepers came back and thanked God? Only one of the ten came back. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. This is this is a picture, this is an archetype of the bride, the one in ten. And this one in ten fell to his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And it says, now he was a Samaritan. He was a foreigner. Okay. Then Jesus answered, we're, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? That's a picture of the Jews not leaving the Jewish believers, the Jewish believers who do not have faith in Yeshua and Jesus. They're going to be part of this second group that's going to leave later if they come to call upon the name of the Lord during this time of trial. We see the same thing in Hosea. Um, Hosea 6.10, that's a harvest that's appointed to the Jews. Okay, um, where was I out of here, guys? So I've talked about the people who get to escape and the small number that are going to escape. When they escape, when these events begin, this, this incredible night of thunder and lightning that's going to light the sky up from one end to the other, the radiant uh, colors in the sky, that's how we know when it's going to happen. The sign, the collision, you know, Luke 21, the signs in the sky, sun and the moon and the stars. We guys have all heard that a bunch of times. Um... Zechariah, let me just jump back to Zechariah again. Zechariah tells us, let me show you how the first fruits leave early. So, quickly, let me go back to Zechariah here in the beginning. I'm going to show you. This is a, st a study document I did. It's, it's got everything in Zechariah. Now, look, 
this is proof about the Old Testament prophecy. So here are six verses in all of Zechariah where Jesus himself in the New Testament, it is said that, quote, Jesus fulfilled these events in Zechariah. Now, Zechariah has 14 chapters. Okay, 20 verses in each chapter. Let's pretend. 280 verses. We got six of them that Jesus here, that he fulfilled. What about the other 200 and some verses? See, none of this has been fulfilled in totality. It's little bits and pieces have been fulfilled. But the but, you know, the pastors, the prognosticators, the theologians, they just consider all of it fulfilled when none of it has been fulfilled, it really at all. It's all going to be fulfilled when the end time events begin. And Zechariah, like Micah, like Hosea, they give us the picture in chronological order. And you can, you can figure out by reading all this what's going to happen first and then next. So Zechariah 1 speaks about a call to return to the Lord. And it speaks about a vision of horsemen. This is just like, you know, Revelation 6, the horsemen. It talks about these horsemen patrolling the earth after these 70 years, 1948 to 2018. Uh, so let me go to Zechariah 2. But when Zechariah 2 starts, we, we hear familiar words. All of a sudden, there's a man with a measuring line. Same thing from Revelation 11, the two witnesses. John was the one with that measuring line. Maybe John's one of the witnesses. Okay, so here's Zechariah 2, verse 1, the man with the measuring line. Where are you going? I'm going to measure Jerusalem. Okay, Revelation 11, John was given a measuring line. So it's all connected. Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a village without walls. That's what it says in Ezekiel 38, right before Jerusalem is destroyed. I mean, sorry, Israel is attacked. They're not destroyed, but they're protected by God. But look what it says here. Um, down here at 7, verse 7 up escape to Zion you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon this is the first fruit rapture in Zechariah 2 okay the first fruit rapture early on Zechariah 2 okay and then it go it goes through a chronology of what's going to happen to this first fruits group they're taken here I got ver I got other Verse 7, up escape. I got the Jeremiah verses. I got the Joel, the Obadiahs, the Lukes, all talking about escape. It's all talking about the same thing. Um, it talks about how the Lord's going to shake his hand over them. Same thing in Isaiah 49. I will lift up my hand to the nations. Then the little ones are taken. Isaiah 49. Then they're singing and rejoicing like it talks about with the 144,000. Jeremiah 31, they're going to sing aloud at the height of Mount Zion. Same thing, Zechariah 2.10, sing and rejoice. So Zechariah 2.10, right? Same thing as Jeremiah 31, 12. This is the first fruits reunion at the height of Mount Zion in heaven. Then there's a silence, you know, before all flesh. Revelation 8, silence in heaven. You know, he's aroused himself. This is Zechariah. Uh, he's going to leave his holy dwelling. Same thing it says in Joel 2. Let the bridegroom leave his room. Then you get into chapter 3, and you see Joshua, who represents the high priest. Okay, he, He's representing the, uh, the, the bride, and Joshua's going to be judged quickly right there, and there's Satan right there to accuse him. This is a picture of what's going on to the bride of Christ at the initial, quote, judgment seat, the mercy seat of the Lord, Jesus' mercy seat. And then all of a sudden, Joshua gets new garments, the bride's going to get new garments, a new, new, new body. There's a vision of a golden lampstand. This is this is the order of how it's all going down. These lampstands are talked about in Revelation, and then it talks about a flying scroll and all this other stuff. Um, a vision of more chariots, and then we get all the way down. See now, we're, this, these events are in heaven. Zechariah eight is a picture of this after this reunion's occurred. It's a picture of the heavenly Mount Zion. Hosea 5 speaks about the same thing. So Zechariah 8, okay, the coming peace and prosperity in Zion. What they don't realize, it's the heavenly Mount Zion. It hasn't come to the earth yet. And the Lord says here, says, um, he says, I have returned to Zion to dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. That's the new city, Jerusalem, a faithful city. A mountain of the holy mountain. This is the new. Hosea 5 speaks about the same thing. After he steals away the little ones in Hosea 5, 
he returns to his place. So when you read Zechariah 8, and you see verse 3, I have returned to my place in, in, Jeru in Zion. It's the same thing it says in Hosea 5, 15, I will return to my place until they acknowledge the first fruits group has been taken, until the next left behind church that needs to be refined, until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. And in their distress, they will earnestly seek me. In their distress, they will earnestly, this is the this time of distress, earnestly seek the Lord. And then the, the folks that call on his name will be taken. See, there's much more depth to these scriptures than just saying there is no rapture and there's no escape when obviously there is. As I know I'm moving fast but if I move slow I think people get bored. Um, okay, uh, Hebrews 12 tells us about this. This is Hebrews 12 is the same reunion that Paul, whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, we don't know who wrote it, talks about but you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable the festival gathering of the angels and the assembly of the firstborn, the first fruits. This event is the same thing. So now we're in Zechariah 8, and then we come down to Zechariah 9, back on earth. And what, how, what do we see? We see Damascus being destroyed in the eyes of men. This is the our men on the, the eyes of men are on the tribes of Israel. And we go back. This is everything going on on earth now. So what I see happening is the first fruits are taken in Zechariah 2, Hosea 5, and then in Hosea 8 and Zechariah 9, this begins. Zechariah 9 begins the events on the earth and there's war in the Middle East. And then we have uh, the rapture in Zechariah 9, 14. Then the Lord will appear over them, the sound of the trumpet, and then he will, on that day he will save them. Right? And it's the same thing from 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. This is that rapture verse. So we can, we can using the Old Testament prophets, we can place in time when the Thessalonians rapture is going to take place, which is after the gathering of the first fruits from back in Zechariah 2. And we go a little further, then, uh, then, those, uh, then there's going to be this transformation that's going to occur. The house of Judah is going to be like a majestic steed. Ephraim's going to be like a mighty warrior. Then Ephraim, the first fruits, will become like a mighty warrior. They're they're going to whip. This is the, this is the when you read Zechariah 10. This is the, um, the 144,000 back on earth harvesting, and then they're going to gather up to harvest. And then you get to Zechariah 11, and there you got the Antichrist taking over. That's how you see, guys. So right then, right then and there, what I've done is I've gone from Zechariah 2. First fruits removal. Zechariah 8, a picture of the first fruits uh, reunion in the height of Mount Zion. Zechariah 9, war beginning, World War III on earth. I'm jumping around here, guys, I know. And then Zechariah 11, uh, you see the Antichrist taking over. So it, it's much more deep than just saying there's no, there's no <laughs> escape when there's escape all over. The Old Testament prophets, if you read them and understand that they're not fulfilled. So let me just look here, grain of sand. So, guys, I want to make a reference. I just got a, um, I've talked about this group before. Uh, this is a, a small orphanage of about 22 kids in, uh, in Kenya. And I just received a, a, a note from the, from the, it's a mother and a son. The son's name is Joshua. The mother's name is Rose. They, they run this orphanage. Um, they have, they're asking for donations for their kitchen. This this is their kitchen, guys. So take take a look at the kitchen here. I mean, it's it's not desirable. So she writes here. She she Rose writes. We are requesting brothers and sisters as well as friends to pray over the need of the good, to build a good kitchen for our orphanage use. The pictures here shows the kitchen we are currently using. Kindly help when you can. What she told me in another message was that when the cook comes, he doesn't come when it rains. So when it doesn't rain, when it doesn't when it rains, the kids don't eat. And so I want to talk about religion. I've talked about this before. This, this idea of man's religion is really a detriment to our Christian faith. But the brother of Jesus speaks about, he says, there's only one religion that's pure. The religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So there are a few ways to donate to these guys. Um, you can send a money gram. You can go to this link. 
for the send a money gram you just need uh, Joshua's name and his email address you don't, you don't need his phone number and it sends Joshua an email with a link with a number that he can go to this uh, to the bank and get and get the funds sent to them uh, world remit has the same thing world remit asks for the phone number and it asks for the location which is a uh, Gucha Kenya and of course PayPal is the easiest for us to use but um PayPal can be problematic um, there are other PayPal account that I that people sent money to. Uh, it got overwhelmed, and, and PayPal was considering these some kind of fraud going on, and then he broke it off. So I would I would try to use the MoneyGram or World Remit first, and use PayPal as a last resort. But guys, you can see what they're doing here. This is um this is tough. You know, I look at this and look at what I have and what we have. It's anyway, it's tough to kind of kind of grasp that, guys. So. Um, I talked about immediately grabbing. I'll have all these documents for you guys to download. Um, grain of sand, harvest in the Bible. And you guys, th th this first fruits escape that I have here, th this is good to have on the tip of your tongue. And you guys can download this, this large document here about the rapture. I, I go over many other verses in th that you can see where the rapture is. A lot of people want to speak about how the rapture is not in the Bible. Uh, obviously it says, and I even have a section on where it is in the Old Testament. Um, so with that, guys, you can download this document, these documents, and I would um, consider praying about hope for the orphans. With that, have a great day, and God bless you.